Luca! Martin, great to see you. How fair things? Well, thank you. Uh, in a previous vi video, you showed us how to set up a CICD pipeline in GitHub Actions using service account keys. But you also said there was a better way of doing it. Yeah, exporting service account keys leads to a lot more work. For example, when you need to rotate the keys. That's where Workload Identity Federation comes in. But we must use a key, right? Uh, how else would Google know that the call from GitHub is legit? The magic is in the implementation details. Let's take a closer look. All right, we're trying to eliminate exported service account keys. But how can GitHub deploy code securely to Google Cloud without a service account key? Well, if someone had my car key, they could drive my car, regardless of whether I allow it or not. Yeah, that makes sense, Luca. Uh, and that poses a lot of security concerns, right? Exactly. And even though GitHub is securely storing that service account key, it adds one more place of vulnerability. Plus, the key is long-lived. Right, right. And many organizations even forbid the export of keys for, for that very reason. Right. Fortunately, we now have Workload Identity Federation, which means we don't have to rely on keys anymore. How does that work? Well, with Workload Identity Federation, when the unknown actor tries to use my car key in the analogy earlier, I am able to decide if the car will unlock or not. Hmm. So instead of my car key being open to any user out there when the key is clicked, a message is first sent that describes their identity. Like who I am or if I'm old enough to drive, for example? Exactly. When the car key is clicked, a message is sent to a service that I control. I can set it up first to only trust messages coming from certain car keys or to only allow users that meet given condition based on information in the message itself. Great. Uh, this seems promising, Luca. Uh, what happens next? So should the authorization succeed, the service will send a token back to my car key, enabling the actor to use it on behalf of me. The token itself, however, is only single use. Got it. And each time the key is used, the same flow takes place. Uh, sounds like I won't have to worry about long-lived service account keys anymore. Exactly, Martin. And we have some best practices for Workload Identity Federation setup as well. Let's get into it. All right, Martin. We are going to start by setting up Workload Identity Federation through the Cloud UI. Perfect. And I presume we can always go back and automate the setup with gcloud commands at the command line, right, later? Exactly. We even have all the commands you need for setup here in the auth action readme. That's great. Uh, now, what's the first step? The first thing you'll need to get started is enable the IAM Credentials API in the Google Cloud Console. Sounds good, Luca. Uh, let me do so real quick. All right, should be good to go there. Uh, what's next? Awesome. So next, we're going to work through configuring a workload identity pool and provider. Let's search for Workload Identity Federation in the Google Cloud Console. Sounds good, Luca. Uh, looks like I'll need to select the new workload uh, provider and pool option. That is correct. There will be a few things we'll need to do here. The first will be to create an identity pool, which manages a group of identities and their access to Google Cloud resources. Thinking back to our analogy earlier, the pool would be the key ring our car key is on. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, so the pool just manages these identities. And each of the identities or keys on the key ring would be a provider, uh, like GitHub, for example? Exactly, Martin. In our case, GitHub. But it can be any, any identity provider that supports OIDC. Oh, any provider. Do you have an example of what you might be able to do here uh, beyond GitHub? Of course, Martin. A good example might be a service running on an AWS EC2 instance accessing unstructured data from cloud storage. Got it. Uh, to make sure I'm understanding then, Workload Identity Federation would allow my app on Amazon Web Services to make a validated request to my Google Cloud Storage bucket. And if valid, it would have short-lived access to that bucket? That is exactly right, Martin. And all without the need to export a long-lived key. Beautiful. It's all falling into place, Luca. 
so uh, to get started, let me create a pool. I'll name this GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions uh, Cloud Run Workflow here to be specific. Uh, I'll add a provider to this pool. Uh, I assume that'll be GitHub? That's correct. Let's choose the OIDC and fill in the information for GitHub. Perfect, uh, filling that now. Uh, oh, uh, what's this issuer URL field all about, Luca? So that'll be a specific URL where GitHub issues the OIDC token. Uh, let's check GitHub's documentation for that. Okay, uh, checking GitHub's documentation. Ah, there it is, found it. Uh, copy that, update that field now. All right, uh, not, what are these attribute and condition inputs here? Great question. So the attribute mapping flag is how we map claims from the OIDC token that GitHub provides to attributes within Google Cloud. Got it. So those conditions in the core example, that could be like, is the driver 18 or older? Are they a family member and so on? And that information would be provided when the user clicked the car key. What sort of information can GitHub provide here? There's a fair amount that GitHub will provide you, Martin. And GitHub has a full list, but to tease out just a few, uh, the repository, workflow ID, actor, and event name are all common options. So I could, for example, restrict authentication based off of the repo name uh, to further lock down access. Exactly. The only thing we will need to do is map them to attributes within Google Cloud. Let's add a few mappings. So the first mapping will be the required google.subject, which we can set to the subject for the OIDC token. All right, adding it now. Second, we can add a few values. One for the actor in case we want to restrict access down to the individual person and the other for the repository. Oh, okay, adding that as well. Uh -huh. uh, now, what about the attribute conditions here? Uh, how do I make sure authentication is restricted to the right repository? Great question. And we do so through the attribute condition flag. The condition can be a common expression language statement or an IAM policy. I personally like to use CEL. It's really simple to use and great for evaluating expressions. Plus, we have great docs on it as well. Gotcha. Uh, what would the common expression language CEL statement be in this case? So it's going to be something really simple. Let's add a CEL statement setting assertion.repository to the name of your repo, Martin. Great. I'm doing that now. The auth action provides a lot of flexibility, huh? It really does. Uh, okay, Luca, is this all I need to do to use Workload Identity Federation with GitHub? The last step, Martin, would be to allow the Workload Identity Provider to impersonate the service account you use to deploy the Cloud Run service. Oh, right. So I need to explicitly specify what service account will be impersonated. So what service account will this run on, on the Google Cloud side? Uh, that makes sense, but, but how do I do it? Yeah, so once the pool and provider are created, we can click into the pool and grant access to a specific service account. Okay, I'll click into the pool now. Uh, so this service account, uh, Luca, this will be one with access to our Cloud Run resources? That's correct. Great, uh, looks like everything is set up and ready in Google Cloud. Uh, let's go and update GitHub. So uh, let's see, all right, uh, I'm in the actions workflow file in GitHub. And I see the original auth action, the, the one we set up uh, last episode. So what should I change here? So the changes are actually quite simple. Instead of the service account key, we are going to add two new parameters, the workflow identity provider and the service account to impersonate. Got it. Uh, I'm going to fill these in with the GitHub secrets that I will create shortly. Um, so one quick question here, Luca. Uh, what's the format of the workflow uh, Workload Identity uh, Federation Provider. So the format of the provider includes the Google Cloud project number, the name of the workload identity pool, and the name of the provider. We can also use gcloud commands to fetch the full provider programmatically as well. Great. Uh, just fetch the workload uh, identity provider. We really need a shorter name for it. I know. That. <laughs> That's a lot to say. That's a lot to say. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, so, so the, this uh, provider and the service account are saved as secrets in GitHub. Uh, now, anything else before deploying? Nope, it all seems set up, Martin. 
Perfect. Uh, let me try out the new CICD workflow. Uh, I'll make a minor change to my code here. Uh huh. Uh, let's see if it redeploys my service. Let's do it. So as the workflow runs, Martin, you'll notice that the auth action step exports temporary credentials to our environment. Awesome. Uh, and looks like my service redeployed to Cloud Run and all without a service account key. It's pretty great, right? All right, Luca. So with these changes, anytime my GitHub action workflow runs, the workflow is validated as coming from my repository and a single use key is provisioned for the Cloud Run deployment, right? Exactly, Martin. We are no longer letting just about anyone who has access to our car keys use our car. That is now locked down based on conditions we control. Plus, there is no need to export long-lived credentials, which means our workflow is more secure. Brilliant. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you like this video, please subscribe below and leave a comment. Also, let us know if you have any questions for Luca about what we covered in this video. And if you're interested in more actions managed by the Google GitHub Actions team, check out their org in the description below. Until next time. Bye.